So there you go. I do apologise about the wind. So that's her in profile. I say all the teak has been cleaned. I cleaned it earlier on in the year. She's a little bit grubby today because we've had a bit of a sort of rainy sandstorm. There you go. All of the covers pop up, zip up and roll out as well. So a swim ladder down there and it has got part of the snap davit system on as well. Obviously shore power over there. The other neat thing is actually you notice here, look, diesel filler that side, diesel filler this side as well. So you can fill her from either a single tank, but you can fill her from either side. It's also a single engine. So underneath the floor here, we'll have a look in a moment, is the Volvo Penta D4 260 um, out, um, engine and outdrive. This whole area here, as you can see, is fantastic entertaining for seating. There's a small table here, which I've made up, but also underneath here, there is a bigger table. And I'll drop in some pictures to show you the big table up. and then all of these seats folded in to make a massive lounging area. Helm seats here. This flips up like so, and then folds forwards like so. But I'll drop some photos in to show you what that looks like. There's a sink under here, which is, uh, we went out recently, so it's got, has all the uh, bits and pieces that we tend to keep. So sink in there with a fold out tap. And then underneath is a secondary cockpit fridge, like so. I'll just turn around, give you a view of the cockpit area. Like so, quite nice because there's big wide walkways you can get right the way through. There's a little bit of storage under the seat cushion there. Another clever thing is when you do make up this area, the seat cushion sits underneath there. So all you have to do is literally pull it out and this whole area is made up. Vast, vast storage locker under there. I'll, if I remember, I'll drop in a picture of that storage locker. It is quite full because I've got a lot of stuff in it. And there's also another storage locker underneath this seat here. But obviously because the engine hatch comes up, there's nothing underneath there. It's all self-draining. And then in here, we have the battery isolation switches and trips for the domestic and engine battery. And then in here, we have storage for the two onboard gas lockers I've got. And then you have manual bilge pump and handle, and then two 12 volt power outputs, one low voltage, so one low ampage and one high ampage. Fuel cutoff switch is in there, like so. Nice chaise lounge there. We have an Alpine stereo system that runs throughout. Speakers both sides in and out. As I mentioned earlier, brand new canopy. This is the clamshell up here. So you can fold this front cover up and put it away here. And you can zip out the side, that side, and zip up and roll out the back if you want, and then just have the, the bimini out. So over to the helm. As I say, double helm seat, which is quite nice. It's a footrest here, and a little storage basket down there for charts and navigation bits and pieces. I've upgraded to the Raymarine um, Axiom 9. I've obviously also put a USB charger in there as opposed to the standard cigarette lighter. I've replaced all of the carling switches. Then underneath here we have the depth sounder and the tri data. So this one gives you speed, depth, and water temperature and trip. She has 633.3 hours on her at the moment. Electric engine hatch, so you push that button there. I think I've showed you this many times before and the entire engine hatch comes up and down electronically. And here we are down in the engine bay. 
For starters, you can see the electrical mechanical ram that I added. It just makes access to the engine bay really easy because it is quite a large hatch. You can see there's two manual fire extinguishers over here and down there is the automatic fire extinguisher. As I say, the engine has been fully serviced this year. I've also had some additional work done on the engine bay. Well, I should say on the engine, <laughs> not the engine bay. So this thing here, which is the air charge cooler, that's been removed um, and the insert has not been acid washed. It's actually been completely replaced with a brand new unit. That affects the, or cools the, the um, engine system, but it also cools the oil cooler and the fuel cooler. So these have all been replaced as part of the service, as has the fuel filter over here. And I've got two spare fuel filters. While we're here, you can see the battery charger over there. The battery box here, just over here. It's got two domestic batteries and two engine starter batteries. Blue cylinder, cylinder over there is for the hot water system for the boat. Extractor fan over there. Yeah, that's turbocharger at the back. Hydraulics over there for the outdrive leg and the trim tabs. Hydraulic steering and then some of the EVC systems and the shore power over there. But generally speaking, yeah, she's been fully serviced as of March of this year. She's been out of the water, anti-fouled, polished. The outdrive leg has been serviced and new anodes fitted. And as I said, I've had some additional work in the shape of the air charge cooler. I'll try and drop, drop in a picture of the unit that was replaced so you can see. Single engine, so single electronic lever. It's the EVC system, which means it's really, really simple. Into gear, into neutral, into reverse. I have a, I had a bell thruster uh, siphoner side power bell thruster fitted. That also comes with the remote control. Obviously Lenko trim tabs there as well. VHF radio, pretty standard. A few steps down, takes you, let's have a quick look down here first while I walk into it. So forward di dinette, which then converts into a forward berth. I'll drop some pictures and show you what that looks like as well. And then we have a really, really good full galley down here. And also what's quite nice, it's decent headroom as well. So if I turn the camera around, there you go. You can see really good headroom. Just for the sake of it, three steps down here. Top one is a rubbish bin. Ooh, sorry, I mean to show you my rubbish. Cutlery drawer in there. And in here is the second sort of galley fridge. That vent you can see down there is the uh, Eberspatcher warm air heating vent, so there's diesel heating. This is quite nice. In here is our sort of larger galley cabin. Uh, ca cabin? <laughs> Let's call that a cupboard, shall we? Unless you're particularly small. Then double sink here, like so. I just had this made up because it gives you a really bit of extra extra cooking area, particularly when you are cooking on the gas hob. If you've got that off, you do lose a fair bit of worktop space. So I had that made up for worktop space. As you can see here, logically, double gas burner, which works really well. And then down here we have a gas oven and grill. And we've cooked loads of things in there, pizzas, um, heated up curries, uh, fish and chips, the whole lot. A couple of storage cupboards up here. One that we're currently using for crockery. Centre one here, which we use for cups. And this one over here, which we use for just you know, general bits and pieces. It's also quite nice, there's a recessed storage <laughs> section at the back here. So you can keep all your bits and pieces, stops them floating around while you're going along. There's the heater control for the Eberspatch warm air heating. And then we have things like the fridge switches here, all the navigation and uh, engine switches here all the lights, the power sockets, cabin lights, and all the water systems and bilge pumps, warning illumination here, and the 12 volt amps and volts meters here. And then this is shore power, water heater, and auxiliary sockets. And obviously trip here for the mains. Little cupboard in here, gives you a bit of hanging wardrobe space. Mm. Then there's two quite large voids, which I have to admit I've got full up here. Heaters, radiators, and dehumidifiers. 
opening lights on both sides, two on the starboard side, one on the port. They're the two hatches we looked at earlier, which are fully opening and uh, give you really good forward breeze and ventilation. Here is my remote control bow thruster here. And then this switch here is for the anchor, which is up and down. Provincial VHF radio. And then there's the Gomex TV aerial there as well. And under this seat here, and also under this seat here, you have storage. There is also a very large storage void underneath this one here. There would be another storage void under that leg of the table there if there wasn't a large bow thruster in there. And now you can also see here that we have the speakers. I have run the television cables actually over to this side as well. So underneath that unit there is a 240 mains voltage socket for the TV and an extension the aerial socket, which normally sits on that side. So let's go and have a look in the heads first. Open this door here. That takes us into the heads. Very, very standard and conventional um, Jabsco manual pump action loop. Works on seawater and pumps automatically into a holding tank. To pump the holding tank out, really straightforward. You just hold your finger down on that switch, obviously when you're out at sea, but there is an external waste pump out so sometimes we go over to Paul Town Quay and pump out there. Sink as you'd imagine, nice mixer tap here, this unit pulls out and plugs in up here for the shower, a couple of mirrors and just put the lights on and really good illumination. Opening port light which is really really nice to get ventilation in as well and then underneath here we have a storage cupboard for loo rolls and bits and pieces. You'll also, uh, there's another little cupboard in here for toothbrushes and bits and pieces, and there is, as you can probably see, there a 12 volt socket if you've got an electric toothbrush or uh, electric razor. You'll also notice there's a door here, so this door effectively opens into the heads, but gives you access to the aft cabin, which is here. Just turn the lights off. And we'll have a quick look in the aft cabin. So that's the aft cabin. You can now see the Jack and Jill door, as they call it, that goes into the heads. There's a little storage unit down here with open storage, space on top, and a little hanging cupboard in there. We then have a light switch here for the whole cabin and a separate sort of independent light here. I have added reading lights to both sides of the bed. So there are independent LED reading lights. So you can read at night. This is, a, this is a really nice cabin. To start with, you've got cross ventilation. So there's a port like that side. There's another opening port like this side so you can get a cross breeze across. Underneath this cabinet here, as you can see, is full of storage right the way across. This berth is a full size standard UK double bed. So it's really quite spacious. Right at the back there is the engineering space. So you've got some of the navigation equipment under there and the ever spatula heating and underneath and in here, underneath this little pool cupboard here, is access to some of the sump pumps, bilge pump and macerator. But that's a really nice sleeping area. And I'll tell you something else, it's incredibly quiet because in the aft cabin here, you don't get the slap slap noise of the fore cabin. So opening ventilation, there's obviously curtains here and there, right in the back there is a 240 mains volt power switch. So there you go, so that is the aft cabin. It also has a bit of extra natural light and what we do at night, because there's no curtain here, is we actually just put a towel over the top of that. So there you go, that is my Sea line S29, which is about to go on sale. Anyone's interested in buying it, I will put all the price details and the tech spec and the um, engine hours in the bottom. But if it's a bit of you and you fancy a Sea line S29, please get in touch, we're looking to go bigger and, and larger so yeah be in touch thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed please like and please subscribe and i will see you next time round